Hello, hello, welcome to a full day of eating. Today's got a little bit of a twist. We are going to be eating all foods that the internet says is bad for us, which pretty much just is a normal day of eating because according to the internet, all foods are bad for us. Anyway, a lot of diet culture BS bashing today, and we're starting out with some oatmeal, which the internet loves to hate. So why do farmers give their animals oats to make them fat. What about oatmeal? So many people think, oh, it's a health food. It's heart healthy. I actually have a whole video about oatmeal if you want to learn more about why it's actually fine to consume. But one of the best things about oatmeal and the reason why I recommend it is because it has so much fiber. And most of us are not getting enough fiber in. So demonizing foods that have fiber is just silly. I actually have some errands to run and I was planning on getting a little treat for myself while I'm out. Maybe an iced coffee and a breakfast sandwich, but I'm starving right now. So we're having a little breakfast appetizer and we'll have like a more filling substantial breakfast in a little bit. If you guys haven't tried mush, I highly recommend it. They sent these to me and I hadn't tried them before because I have made my own overnight oats and I just... I don't know, the texture wasn't quite right for me. I didn't love them. These are way better than my homemade ones, to be honest. I usually will like dump this into a bowl and add lots of toppings like fruit, chocolate chips, whatever. But again, today is just, I just need a little appetizer. So we're having this, not gonna keep me full for too long. And then we're gonna have a bigger breakfast later. All right, I'm gonna enjoy this, let my hair dry, and then we're gonna go run some errands. I've got a friend with me today. Finn, Finn, come here. Oh, yeah, we're going bye-bye. Oh, this is fun. He literally already knows. Look at him. He's looking at it. Do you know? Do you know? Yum. Yum. Uh. Disgusting. So the internet loves to hate on iced coffee, especially ones that are sweet and flavored. And I also hear a lot of claims that coffee dehydrates you. And most people don't realize that that coffee is a huge contributing factor to dehydration, to heart malfunction, and also to imbalance in heartbeats. The good thing is, is it probably isn't actually doing that. Coffee may act as a mild diuretic because of the caffeine. And I, of course, don't recommend drinking 18 cups of coffee a day and no water. <laughs> but having a cup or two of coffee a day, along with your other fluids, likely isn't going to mean that you become dehydrated. This is called a toastachino. <laughs> it's an iced cappuccino with marshmallow. You baristas, let me know. Is an iced cappuccino just an iced latte? Because one time... I was at a place for brunch and they had a cappuccino, but I wanted to get it iced and the waitress made me feel pretty stupid. She was like, that's not a cappuccino anymore. Whatever. On their menu here, they called it an iced cappuccino. Whatever it is, it's very tasty. Also got a breakfast sandwich, sausage, egg, and cheddar on a bagel. I'm starving because all I've had so far today is that oatmeal, which was delicious, but not really a full breakfast for me. So this is really hitting the spot. We all know that the internet hates bagels. I've heard claims that eating a bagel is like eating six slices of bread. I heard that a bagel is equivalent to six slices of bread. That's a lot of carbs. First of all, no need to demonize bread. Also, it's just not. <laughs> a bagel is just basically another form of bread but we need carbs. They're good for us. I don't know about you, but I do not feel good when I don't eat carbs. Finn and I are going to finish our breakfast. I'm sure I'll share some more with him because, I mean, look at him. Finish our errands and then go home, we got some work to do, and then I'll see you guys probably at lunchtime. Hello, it is lunchtime, and before we start making some lunch, we're gonna dive into a can of liquid aspartame. Look on the back of the bottle of any of these and you'll see a sweetener called aspartame. This is the kind of sweetener you want to avoid. Aspartame is a chemically made, man-made sweetener that is horrible for your gut and your brain. 
The internet hates aspartame. I've actually made an entire video about that too that I'll link below. But the short version is unless you're drinking dozens and dozens of cans of diet soda per day, the aspartame is not going to be what gets ya. Um, by the way, if you saw my last grocery haul, you saw that I found this spiced Coke Zero and I have tried it already and it's good, but not as good as regular Coke Zero. So probably wouldn't buy again, but it's a nice little, a little mix up. I like to add lime to my Coke, which is why I always have a thing of lemons and limes cut up to put into my fun beverginos. I don't know what it is, but adding a lid and a fun straw to my beverage makes me want to drink it more. I don't know why. We are making some egg salad for lunch because eggs have been heavily debated forever in the media. I get asked about eggs all the time. Are they healthy? Are they not healthy? Is there a certain number of eggs that we should eat per day? If we eat too many, are we gonna have a heart attack? Did you know that eggs increase your risk of heart disease and that the average egg has 200 milligrams of cholesterol and eating one egg a day is equivalent to smoking five cigarettes? I think the very first time I heard the thing about eggs being equivalent to smoking five cigarettes was when I watched What the Health in college. If you're getting nutrition advice from a Netflix documentary, that's the first sign that it probably isn't the best, most evidence-based information. I already made hard-boiled eggs earlier, so all we gotta do is chop them up. I also already have chopped up dill pickle and onion. So really all we gotta do is assemble. I will take any opportunity that I get to use this veggie chopper. I love it so much. So the biggest beef that people have about eggs is with the cholesterol. They say that if you eat a lot of eggs, you're gonna increase your risk of having high blood cholesterol, which can increase your risk of heart disease. But the good news is research is showing that the cholesterol we eat doesn't seem to have a big impact on our blood cholesterol levels. What is more going to impact our blood cholesterol levels is going to be stress, including stress about food, alcohol, smoking, as well as saturated fat intake. And it is true that eggs have some saturated fat in them, but big picture here, guys, unless you're eating tons and tons of eggs every single day, along with other really fatty meats or high fat dairy all the time, it's gonna be fine. All foods can fit. So there's likely no need to worry too much about the cholesterol in eggs. Having even two or three a day is likely fine unless told otherwise. Look at how fast that was. And my hands are perfectly clean. All right, eggs going in, going with some diced white onion, dill pickles that I cut up the other day. I don't want all this extra juice in there though. Normally I would like to add some celery, maybe some green onion, but I don't have either of those things today but I do want a pop of green, so I'm gonna add some of the cilantro and also some avocado too. I just have this like half that I wanna use up. Man, I should've added this to the, to the chopper. I like to do a mix of both plain Greek yogurt and mayonnaise just to bump up the protein a little bit. I'm not a fan of doing just plain Greek yogurt because mayonnaise is essential for a mayo-based salad, you know? You know who else loves Greek yogurt? Come here, buddy. Yum. Mayo, mustard. Going in with some salt, some pepper, and some garlic. Now we mush. Little taste test. Mmm, that's good. I told you guys in our last grocery haul that croissants have been sounding like so good for some reason. So I got some and we're gonna use these for our egg salad sammies. I didn't show you guys my finished loaf in the last video, but I did everything bagel loaf. It turned out so good. I'm getting better. My sourdough powers are wielding. Anyways, we are using a croissant though today, which is gonna be so good. Also gotta pack one for Ross for his lunch. They're just so messy. I love them so much, but just crumbs everywhere. I'm also gonna slice up this tomato because something about like a fresh tomato and lettuce, onion, like that tastes so good on like a rich mayo-based sandwich like this. And for all the people who always express their concern about, you know, intuitive eaters not including enough vegetables, vegetables don't have to just be in a pile of like raw carrots and broccoli on your plate. 
I've got avocado in here. I've got onion in here. I've got pickles in here. Cilantro in here. I've got tomato on the base. I'm gonna have some raspberries on the side. You can use veggies to add flavor and texture and crunch and temperature differences, but it's also okay to eat a meal without veggies too. This is all about gentle nutrition, y'all. Gonna add some potato chips. We all know how the internet feels about potato chips. Potato chips are a lot more unhealthier than you realized. You see, for starters, potato chips are high in fat and high in calories. And potato chips contain many pro-inflammatory ingredients. Good old seed oils. And there we have it, boys and girls. It's looking gorge. It's gonna be messy, just a warning. I'm not gonna look pretty eating this. Oh, I got pickle in my hair. The nightshades in these tomatoes are just hitting the spot. I'm gonna finish this off camera because this ain't pretty and I'll see you guys at our next forbidden meal or snack. We're gonna do an early dinner. I am feeling real hungry so I don't feel like doing a snack and then doing dinner later. We're gonna do dinner now and then probably a snack later before bed. For dinner tonight we are making some beef fajitas and our friend Bobby has got some things to say about beef. Beef is bad for the environment because if you're buying factory farm GMO beef well, these are cattle that are in a feedlot that only eat GMO grain and they're farting like crazy. And those farts or methane gas are going to the environment. Beef is generally approved by diet culture because right now the whole carnivore diet is all the rage, but only if choosing grass-fed, organic, licked by an angel beef, which we're not doing. We are doing this beef shaved steak from Kroger. Notice the word organic, non-GMO, grass-fed, nowhere to be seen on this. Does not mean that it's bad for us. This actually is a pretty lean protein, which is the main thing to look for when choosing a beef or really any other meat is prioritizing lean proteins. I personally tend to look at that a lot more than I do if it's grass-fed, organic, non-GMO. If you have the funds, to prioritize that sort of thing, go ahead. But as always, it is all about the intention behind our food choices. If a little bit of orthorexia is what is driving you to make those choices, that's where I would recommend reflecting, digging deep into why that is. Is stressing out about our food choices really helping us? And as always, knowing the dose makes the poison. Okay. Anyway, let's get to it. We're gonna make some fajitas with this. So we're gonna throw this with some red onion and bell pepper on a sheet pan. We're gonna bake it and we're gonna call it a day. Oh, that was a mistake. One thing I've learned is always have a bowl for your scraps so they're not cluttering up your cutting board. The great thing about fajitas is you can really use any meat that you got to make them. You could do shrimp, you could do chicken, any cut of beef. And there's just so many ways to add some veg. And then if I have leftover of this like onion pepper beef mixture, I'll use it for like quesadillas, burritos. Keep it simple y'all. I don't wanna jinx it, but this onion is not making me cry today. There's like a little bit of a sting, but I've been strong so far. All right, let's get rid of the evidence before it does make me cry. Adding olive oil and taco seasoning. I believe they also sell fajita seasoning, which honestly, I don't know the difference between the two. We just always have these on hand. Into the oven until the beef is cooked through. Mm, I've been so thirsty today. There she is. We love a sheet pan dinner. We got these cute little taco holders for, I think, a gift a couple years ago. Love them, I'll link them below. So we're having our store-bought tortillas, gasp. And then we're gonna throw on our fajitas. This is where you can add whatever toppings you want. To be fully transparent, I'm really trying to get back to the book that I'm reading, so I'm not in the mood to do anything too elaborate. So we're going with our plain Greek yogurt some cilantro and that's gonna get the job done tonight he's literally licking his lips over here oh so delicious you're so handsome so i finished fourth wing last week and now i'm reading iron flame 
I just want to eat dinner and get back to my little cuddle station on the couch with Finn and my book. But like I said, we're having dinner really early, so I'm sure Finn and I will want a little popcorn snack later, so I'll see you then. Okay, I lied. I'm back a little bit early. I needed a little something sweet. A little something sweet. So we're having some of this toasted coconut pineapple ice cream. It's really good. It has coconut ice cream with like a little pineapple jelly swirl in there. Very summery, which is the vibes that I need right now. All right, for real this time, a few more bites of this and I'll see you at bedtime snack time. You guys, I don't care what anyone says, this book is worth the hype. I am so invested in this. Thank God it's gonna be, I think, a five-part series. I don't know. Why have I not been reading this whole time? I've been in a reading slump for like a decade. It's about seven o'clock now, and I plan on reading until I fall asleep, <laughs> but I do need a little snack. So like I said, we are doing popcorn, and I'm making it with some canola oil. We all know how the internet feels about canola oil. Canola oil? is toxic. If you want to be healthy, get this damaged oil out of your diet completely. As you may have guessed, I do have a whole video on seed oils. If you want to learn more, seed oils like canola oil are mostly unsaturated fats, which may actually be health promoting. They're not toxic. It's not the same thing as drinking motor oil. And the reason why I like to use it for popcorn is because of its high smoke point. You can't use things like olive oil for popcorn because you'll just burn the oil and it'd be disgusting. Of course, we also need a little melted butter and some salt. And you guys know I love sweet and salty, so we're also gonna add some chocolate chips. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. Hopefully this video was just yet another reminder that absolutely all foods can fit. And even though the internet is constantly telling us there's so many foods that we can't eat, the fear of food is often worse for our health than eating whatever foods that you enjoy. Make sure you guys like this video if you enjoyed it and don't forget to subscribe so you always know when I'm posting new videos like this one. Thanks again for tuning in and I'll see you next time. Bye.